the school board meeting tuesday january thirteenth our first meeting of two thousand and four um... could we rise for the pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god um, I have no adjustments to the agenda uh, this evening, and so we can move on to approving the December school board minutes. Um, can I have a motion? We'll move to, to accept approve. the minutes. Okay, and a second. Kevin, all those approved? Seven zero. Um, we can move on to the comments from our high school students. Uh, Re Michael? Is Rebecca here? No. Okay. I don't know where Rebecca is right now, but um, hopefully she'll be here. Um, some news that we got is that a lot of people from, uh, have applied early decision and have got their uh, uh, acceptance letters back. We have people in Princeton, Stanford. We have three people who are accepted at Amherst. Some, uh, Dickinson, Colorado College, Skidmore, Dartmouth, Colby, Bowdoin, uh, a bunch of people at UVM, and Worcester Polytech as well as, well as Tufts and Babson in Boston College. Um, a survey was given out to the students to see what they thought of the uh, cafeteria situations, the eligibility uh, policy, and the, the possibility of reviving uh, the dress code. These surveys have not come, uh, come back yet, but uh, in a couple of days, we hope to give you the results. The sports season has been kind of lukewarm. There have been a few uh, winnings. The boys and girls swimming have done well. Uh, basketball has gotten off to a rocky start, but we have hope yet. Boys ice, call, uh, ice hockey won its last game and is looking good. Uh, as a member of the German club, we had our first meeting today, which is a, it's a new club. Uh, we celebrated by eating German foods and learning German words and watching Das Boot. <laughs> Jazz band has a strong band this year and is looking forward to Berkeley, which is in a couple of weeks. That's all. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, what what motivated the survey on things like dress code? Uh, the SAC uh, formed a committee, and we, we thought that the dress code wasn't being followed quite as well as it should have been, or that maybe the dress code wasn't covering all, all it should have. So, <laughs> not to use the pun there. <laughs> That's the, we'll just keep it there for the television audience. <laughs> okay, thanks, Michael. Thank you. How um, middle school students? Nora? Um, the winter sports are well underway. Boys basketball just finished last week, and the girls have just begun. The Nordic ski team just had their first race and the girls placed first. Um, also, six members of the student council recently attended a leadership meeting in which they discussed plans to make our school a better place. The projects our school came up with are, one, a winter festival where groups of students create a station about a project they would like to take on. Two was to assign buddies to new students. And three was to have a full day of skits about leadership friendship, bullying, and other related problems. A project that we recently took on was to collect blankets, hats, and gloves to donate to homeless shelters. Because of the cold weather, they are running out. The I-team also just attended an all-day meeting in which they learned about other schools' I-teams, iPhoto, iMovie, and other programs. Just recently, we had Alexa Ainsworth, a skater come to talk to our fifth and eighth grade students about Winter Kids, a program where you ski, skate, and sled free all over Maine. And the fifth and sixth grade Happy Wheel Social is coming up on the 21st. Is there any questions? Okay, thank you. 
Um, communications, does anyone have anything? Um, and there are no comments from the public this evening. Um, we have two item, two um, areas on our agenda to recognize. The first being the um, contribution from the Knights of Columbus, who um, very generously every year um, contributes to our schools, in particularly um, special education programs. And second, um, each of our schools um, are receiving an award from the state, which is really very exciting. As Marie said, um, as a school district, we're very fortunate that we have a number of organizations in the community. We have our parent groups who we recognized last year, um, Lions, Rotary, um, that, that are very, very good to the schools. Um, the Knights of Columbus um, has for as long as anyone can remember, I know Mary and I had a conversation going back, as far as she can remember, um, have really um, took on uh, making an annual contribution uh, to the schools um, through some fundraising that they do um, for uh, special education students. And this kind of had, had always just gone on, and we, we very graciously accept the check, um, as we would any check that anyone would like to send to us. Um, but we felt, you know, this has been something that's going on for, for, for so long that we just don't want people to think that we don't appreciate it, and especially the Knights who have been so good to the schools. So we thought we'd take a moment this evening um, to recognize uh, the, Knights of the Knights of Columbus and just show a small token in the form of a, a framed certificate we would like to give to the Knights and representing them here this evening is John Lenahan. This is a certificate of recognition and appreciation presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board to the Knights of Columbus Council 7074 in recognition of the group's longtime unsolicited support through the proceeds of its annual Tootsie Roll Drive to the children with special needs in the Cape Elizabeth schools, signed by Thomas A. Frisella, Superintendent and Marie Prager, School Board Chair. And also this evening, um, as most of you know, through the uh, No Child Left Behind Act, there were a number of schools across the country uh, that were recognized as failing schools. We're very fortunate here in Cape Elizabeth that we do have outstanding schools. Um, and not that test results uh, are the only thing that we look at, um, but we were, all three of our schools, were on a list of outstanding schools. Um, and were cited as exemplary schools as far as those test results are concerned. Um, and in most cases, um, in some cases, there were two schools that were recognized in the entire state in certain areas, and, and in most of the cases, you're just talking about four or five, maybe six schools um, that were recognized as exemplary schools, and all three of our schools were recognized, and I think we're one of only two districts um, that had the number of um, citations of, as exemplary in math and in reading um, that we did. So we were at the top of the list as far as being recognized for our performance. So we have a, um, the certificate that actually is from the state of Maine, um, signed by the commissioner, which I'll read, and then we'd like to have the, each principal come up and accept this, and I know you'll find a great place to, to place in the schools. And I'll read the first one. It's in recognition of your consistently high performance in grade four reading and mathematics on the main education assessment. The certificate of award is presented to Pine Cove Elementary School, Cape Elizabeth School Department, given this 14th day of November, Susan Gendron, Commissioner, Maine Department of Education. Tom?
And the next one is awarded to um, Cape Elizabeth Middle School um, in recognition of consistently high performance in grade eight reading on a main education assessment. Nancy Hutton. Thank you. And the last one is in recognition of your consistently high performance in grade 11 mathematics on the main education assessment at Cape Elizabeth High School. I think the only other school in the state that was recognized in math was the main school of math and science besides Cape Elizabeth High School. move on to the superintendent's report. Yes, I have just a couple of items to share. And one, um, for those school board members, you're familiar with the benchmarks that the town has presented um, at our recent uh, budget workshop um, to begin our budget process. One of the things I'd like to share with you and, and, and also let um, the public know that as a school district, we feel that's, that's, that's extremely important to kind of look where you where you stack up in different areas. Um, in, this, in this area, um, I think predominantly, but also to look at where we stand in the state of Maine and then where we can to look at benchmarks outside of the state. So I just gave you a sample of one way we can do that in, in MEA scores, but we're also going to look at other kinds of things like per, per, per pupil expenditure, um, other achievement test data that we may have that we can compare. I mean, SAT scores are one example that we can compare outside of Maine. Um, we can look at other kinds of financial data that is available. What we're trying to do is really take a look at what is easily accessible through websites. Um, the State Department does have information that we can uh, garner to put together some sort of a report. But I think it's an important, and I, in, in looking at what the town did, I think this is important information, and then hopefully we can share this not only with the school board, um, but with the public. So I just wanted to let you know if you have ideas about information that you think may be available that we can use um, that's important, um, we are going to put together a book that we'll have hopefully by the end, at least some of it, by the end of the budget cycle. Um, I look at Mary because she'll probably be doing a lot of the research on this. Um, but I think it is something that's important that we really measure ourselves and see how we stack up uh, against other school districts, both in and, in and outside of the state. What I really need input on is you know, what those areas are that we should be looking at, and we'll see if we can find it. Um, the other item on, on the agenda, on my report, has to do with the 2004-05 budget. Just to let you know that as of today, we've completed our um, first round of, of budget presentations um, with the school um, administrators and, and, and departments um, and are looking at at least initial costs. Um, it is a needs-based budget. We are um, really trying to work with the goals that the school board has established, that is really looking at uh, programs and initiatives that meet the needs of all of our students that really fall within the main learning results and those requirements from the main learning results. And the other goal having really to do with technology. And technology in a sense, not just what are we gonna do about the laptops, but how do the laptops and other technology initiatives fit within a big picture, and a long range picture for the school district. Um, and I guess another reason I put this on here is to let you know um, that it's a bit different this year. Um, you know, we've had very tight budgets uh, for the last several years, and we're going to do everything we can to really keep it a needs-based budget, but also think it's important to inform you about those things either that aren't on there, uh, that had to be taken out of the budget, um, and also maybe in our first presentation, you know, really have a, a, an open discussion and dialogue about what's important so that there may be things that, that we might leave in there so that when we meet with the school board, we can really have a good discussion, a frank discussion about what, what items in that budget really do um, address those goals. Because there are going to be some hard decisions this year. Um, you, you all know that we have 
uh, an enrollment increase at the high school, which obviously means staff. We have an enrollment increase at Pond Cove School. And these enrollment increases go against all the projections that we've done over the last several years uh, with the building project, and we don't really know why. But we have more kids in our schools than we ever anticipated. Um, last year alone, we had a whole nother section of kindergarten that we had to add because we didn't even come close um, in our projections, uh, nor did the experts. We were actually closer in our projection, um, significantly closer than the experts were when they projected what our enrollment was going to be in kindergarten this year. Um, we don't know if this is a trend. We'll have to keep an eye on it if this is going to continue. Um, but obviously, staffing is a huge, uh, it's a huge piece of our budget, and we really need to keep an eye on that. So the process has begun um, at the end of the meeting. I know Marie, I don't know if it's on the dates of when some of those, the budgets, the budget is presented to the, to the school board. Um, this year, uh, we added a, a new piece as far as the school board. Elaine uh, Maloney, the, the finance chair, has been sitting in on those initial presentations, um, which kind of, I think, gives her a flavor for what we go through, at least, at least initially, with, with the budget. Okay, thank you, Tom. And now the principal's reports. Uh, Jeff, the high school. Now, Jeff, before you start, this is our first meeting of the new year. We're already into it for 15 minutes. So depending on these three principal's reports, this could be a record meeting. <laughs> no pressure, though. Okay. Let's just see what I can do. I'll do it. I will, <laughs> I will do the best that I can. Uh, we have midterms coming up, end of semester coming up. Um, for parents who don't know, um, students during our midterms come only during the exams themselves that they need to take exams for, and then they're allowed to leave, or they're allowed not to come if they don't have midterms on particular days. Um, our mock trial team this year finished second in the state. Um, it's historical bugaboo. Um, Hampton Academy took first place again. We've never managed to beat Hampton Academy, but I'm sure that we'll be very, very competitive again next year. But the kids had a great season under new coach, Mary Page. So that was, I think, a real accomplishment considering the change in leadership. Learning results, I just wanted to address uh, a couple things quickly just to keep the board informed of some of the work that's going on in connection with learning results and particularly around the topic of supporting kids who struggle. Because we're coming to the end of this uh, first semester, um, two of our math teachers, Elaine Brownell and Charlotte Hanna, took a full day off last week, not a full day off, but they took a full day away from their classes last week. They're the two teachers who are teaching two sections of what we're calling main learning results math that kids take as a second math class, either for a semester or for the year, to sort of help them shore up the skills in basic math and pre-algebra so that they will hopefully be able to have the maximum possibility of doing well in the common assessments and on and, and all that sort of thing. So they, they met with all the kids that they've actually been teaching in those uh, main learning results math classes and had a great day doing it. And they looked at data and worked with guidance counselors uh, around schedules of kids who they're now recommending come into main learning results math. and just. Uh, and they met with those kids as well. So it was a really, really, really productive day. The results are, are there in their math class. Um, the way they're teaching it is just, I think, um, something, something to really treasure uh, because they can, they can produce for all of us sort of measures of results and show the progress that the kids are getting and the kids are responding because they're getting that very, very quick instantaneous feedback. Um, that support for kids, um, for main learning results math, I think is something that needs to continue. Um, I don't see it as a need that is going to disappear at all. In fact, it may, that need may have to be redefined and, and refined as we continue along. Um, and I've started to talk with uh, conversations with the English department about whether there are comparable needs for support um, in the areas of reading and writing and those sorts of things. We've just begun and I'm hoping to be able to present the board at some point in the near future uh, a, a fairly specific plan about what we have in mind as far as that goes. But the math department with our question has been taking a lead in that and they've been doing a great job with it. Um, and the other, only other thing that I wanted to um, bring to the board is uh, I did the mission committee in response to the action of the school board at the last meeting, the mission committee 
met uh, shortly after the, the um, winter holiday and um, came up with a suggestion for a language change that the Michigan City felt very comfortable bringing forward and recommending to the faculty, and the faculty has now approved it by a, a substantial majority. Um, and so I'm bringing forward to you today I don't know if it's appropriate to take action, but at least I can give it to you and you can decide when and how you take action on that. But it does address, I think, the concerns um, that, were, that were addressed last week, okay? Thank you, Jeff. There is one change, and you can see it's under civic and social expectations. Um, the original draft provided that all students will demonstrate a spirit of cooperation and teamwork. Um, the mission committee was very comfortable uh, recommending. In addition to that, um, very consistent with the other language that we have in the, in the mission statement to say demonstrate a spirit of cooperation and teamwork in a climate that embraces diversity. And that's the final version that has the faculty support that I bring forward to you for appropriate consideration at some point. Any questions? Um, it, everything else on here is as we saw it it's last month. It's identical. Yes. Okay. Um, is, is the school board ready to, um, to, can we do that? Can we vote on this mm -hmm. now? Well, the only thing I'd say, the, I went back to the minutes, and what the minutes suggest is that there was a motion made and approved to reconsider the mission statement to include a, an aspect associated with diversity. The actual statement hasn't changed at all. The, the feeling of the committee was um, that the expectation statements are really part of one whole document, and the next comes in and looks at our mission statement, and as we define the work, Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Is everybody, is well, everyone? Can we do that if it's not on the agenda? You probably shouldn't. I'm, I'm actually not prepared to, I mean, I've abstained, but I, I just, I, my, my understanding of the, the recommendation of the board is for the mission statement to be reconsidered. And I know what you're, you're suggesting here, but is it on the wall, the mission statement, or the entire delineation of each of the expectations? Just, just as it is with the um, mission. Procedurally, it, it, to take action, it needs to be on the agenda. Um, and I think the committee just, just met recently, so that's why it, it's, it's, it's not on the agenda. But I, when Jeff talked to me about it, I, th I thought he should at least share it with you this, this evening. I think at the last meeting, um, there was a request to, to, recon to, to reconsider. Um, and my rec in, in the mission statement, and I know the minutes do, do reflect that, but that doesn't mean it was a directive to do it. They did reconsider it mm. and chose not to put it in the mission statement, which is, which is their choice. And, but you did consider doing that. And, and I think your consideration of, you know, uh, looking at the, the term diversity and incorporating it under um, civic and social expectations is cer certainly um, meets any question I would have or any desire to look at this mission statement. I also think that the specifics that are outlined under the academic and the civic and social expectations really tie right into the mission and feed into the mission and support the mission. And so really, therefore, it is part of the mission. <clears throat> and you can't have all of that in your, in your one mission statement. So I would support how it's been presented. Maybe we can't vote on that right now, but. No, not, it's not on your agenda. Yeah, but I would just like to voice my support. 
Okay, thank you. And Kevin? Personally, I felt that the issue was adequately addressed and treat others the way they would like to be treated. However, I would neither oppose adding language on diversity nor require it, and I conveyed that sense to the individuals working on that. Uh, we did not issue a directive. We issued a suggestion. They could have come back with no changes whatsoever. Um, I am prepared to support this document, um, although tonight I do not believe is the uh, appropriate venue, so I would suggest that we get this on to our uh, agenda for the next meeting and treat it as though it was a second reading for adoption. Okay. Um, and Jeff, this will not hamper any work that's being done, will it? Okay. Um, are there any other comments from any other board members? Jennifer? Um, you indicated you wanted this as quickly as possible. Um, I mean, do we want to do this at our next workshop, or does it matter? No, I, I don't think it'll, it'll, they're yeah. continuing to do their work, and I don't think whether this is officially okay. adopted now right, will make I was just going to suggest so we do it as The work that's taking some time right now, in fact, we have some meetings next week, is really not related to either the mission statement itself, that paragraph, or the civic and social expectations. The part that was really of concern was the, the academic expectations, mm -hmm. so that we can get on with the work of defining how we know that, how we measure that, how teachers apply that, and that sort of thing. And we, we're, we will go ahead with that regardless. I was just going to suggest we do it at the workshop. Okay, well, I, you know, I, and I think since we can't do it tonight, I would like to give Jeff an indication of what the board is feeling. Are there any other comments? Um, I'll just say that I support the, the mission statement um, and the expectations that the faculty had written up, and I would have no problem approving this at this time. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Kathy? I, I support the way it's written at, the, at this time. Okay, thank you. And Jennifer, did you... Say oh, well, I or not. But I feel the same way, Kevin. Did. Okay. Marie, I just wanted to express my appreciation to Jeff and your staff for acting on this so quickly. And I know how much work went into it the first time. And a vote went out to the entire staff. And that takes time and consideration. And um, I think we all appreciate um, how quickly you addressed it. And, and I think we appreciate you taking this back to your staff and the full faculty um, for another discussion after all of the work that was initially done on it. So I want to make sure that I say that. Okay. Um, where were we? Oh, the I middle know. school. Oh, I'm Be sorry. Before we let Jeff off the hook, mm -hmm. um, nothing to do with the mission statement, but you were talking about the extra class for in mathematics. And when we were working on this statement, Elaine Brownell, who I highly admire as a math teacher, um, was invited in to speak on the topic of math and said quite clearly she often wondered whether she was grading mathematics or reading. So I do appreciate the fact that the English department is looking into that as an issue. Oh, and Jeff, I have one other question, and you may have said this, and I, I didn't hear it, but the, the math classes that you're doing right now, is that for all grade levels, 9 through 12? I think right now, um, right now it's, it's for ninth graders because okay. that's the group that was faced with the right. learning results graduation requirement. Um, as we get in through, into it, there's, it will become across grade level. Um, provision if it continues, which I hope it does. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Jeff before we move on? Nancy? No? Okay. Nancy, you're up. Well, I feel much less pressure now because that was, <laughs> that was 15 minutes. <laughs> I sort of settle in here kind of thing. Uh, just to share with you, the last time at our December board meeting, I spoke to you about the jazz concerts we were planning for the 22nd and 23rd, where Terry White and the two eighth grade jazz groups would 
perform for our students and those went off very well on december twenty second and twenty third our student audience was terrific the performers did a great job and it was a it's just the way to do the jazz for the middle school for their first concert gives our jazz musicians a chance to perform um, and also our students a chance to begin to understand how you attend a jazz concert which is a bit different and um, so it was a great idea that Terry White brought to us in August, uh, followed through with, and certainly something we're looking forward to in the future as well. Um, it was well done. Nor mentioned the leadership conference that um, six of our student council members just went to last week. They were also accompanied by six members of our civil rights team. And I think she covered very well what they did at the conference and what their project is and what they're working on it. But we sent student right uh, student council members and civil rights team members to that conference together. Paul Casey, the advisor for our student council, attended, as well as Bill Cook, who's one of our advisors for our civil rights team. Also, um, if you're looking for something to do next Thursday morning, uh, we'll be having, I believe it's our seventh annual career awareness morning at the middle school. We will be having presentations from 8 to 9.30. <coughs> Our students in seventh and eighth grade will each go to three presentations, which they have selected, and we've worked it out. So everybody's getting at least two of their first three choices, and then we've had to do a little negotiating with the others, but um, that's all being worked out, and we will do that. And we have 23 sessions they're going to with, I believe it's 28 presenters. And we have a number of new presenters this year coming into the middle school, people who live in the community, but are just coming in as presenters uh, for our career fair. All of this happens because of great collaborative work done by Gail Schmader, our volunteer coordinator for the system, and Rick Madden, our seventh and eighth grade guidance counselor. And we're looking forward to that. And if you would like to drop by for a moment or any of the sessions or just walk through the seventh and eighth grade hallways that day, I mean, it will be a great day. We will be adjusting the schedule a little bit. Fifth and sixth grade students will be having their allied arts in the afternoon, as our allied arts teachers are involved in the career fair as well. And our eighth grade students will be not having allied arts that day, but they will have a good day anyway. Also, <laughs> while we're on the performance venue, in February, um, on February 3rd, we have our variety show. We're going to be doing an afternoon performance for, at 2.30 and an evening performance at 7 p.m. And as we get into some of our evening performances at the middle school, it's a good opportunity for me to remind the public that in order for middle school students or any students to come to middle school evening performances, they must be accompanied by an adult. And for this situation, we define an adult as someone who is 18 years or older and has graduated from high school. So uh, we ask that they be accompanied by an adult for the evening performance. We will certainly take care of the afternoon performance. I believe the whole variety show will only last about an hour, an hour and a half. So we're looking forward to that. We have a lot of students who are practicing all sorts of numbers for that event. And um, I think what I would like to speak to now, oh, just um, Alexa Ainsworth did come, as Nora said. That was a very quick opportunity we had. Christy Murray, who works with Winter Kids, called me because another school had canceled. Alexa is a graduate of um, Cape Elizabeth High School. She was a competitive figure skater. She now skates in synchronized skating in college. And she talked with the students a lot about dedication, commitment, getting involved, finding something that you enjoy, and following through, and then making choices. And she talked a great deal about a choice if you want to work on the Olympic venue, she would have had to give up going to middle school and high school. She did not choose that venue. She also chose to go on to college but still keep her interest in skating and in winter activity alive and well. That was a very good speech that she gave to our fifth graders and our eighth graders. In accepting the plaque tonight for the performance of the, on the MEAs, I would certainly do that in behalf and for all of our students and our teachers who worked very hard to earn that recognition. Um, it has very little to do with me, a great deal to do with their hard work and doing their best work and also getting students ready for those activities. We'd just like to, we, because we've talked about the MEAs being online, when we left for the winter break, the winter holiday break, we thought we were all going to be online with everything for the MEA. The <clears throat> first Saturday in January it came out in the paper that we might only be doing the writing. And then at 10.38 a.m. on Monday morning, we got the official word from the commissioner's office and measured progress that we would only be doing the writing online. 
then later that day we got the official word we would only be doing the writing online if we passed the certification test every school has to take the certification test in order to prove that you can do the writing online the certification is you have to send in some data with student ID numbers and staff ID numbers and some other things but basically that's what it is so they have a way to identify you we have done that you need to attend a mandatory training which Beverly Bisbee, Kim Sturgeon, Gary Lenoy, and I will be attending tomorrow, no, Thursday and Friday at Mahoney Middle School. And then you have to take a practice test. And that means that all of our eighth graders will have to take a test for 35 minutes all at the same time. I, we don't know what the content will be. The content is not the critical matter here. It's to check to see if our data system can send the information successfully to the data system at measured progress, uh, which is the company that MEA contracts with to do the assessments. If all that occurs, we will be doing the writing portion of the MEA online. All other portions of the MEA, at least right now at 8.06 p.m. tonight, it, we are doing with paper and pencil. However, any of that can change, but that's the latest. And I would just say for the public, too, we will be testing, doing the MEA testing for the eighth graders and our California Achievement testing for all of our other students the first week in March, March 1st through the 5th. It is very important that all of our school students come to school well rested and that they be there. This is part of the state of Maine's plan to meet the requirements of No Child Left Behind. So everyone needs to take the MEA test, and we would like to have full participation with the California Achievement test as well, too. The MEA tests are long. They will be going into the afternoon. And therefore, the eighth grade will be closing their second trimester February 27th instead of March 5th. And the eighth grade team is designing a different kind of schedule for eighth graders that week. So that really their job each night for homework, if you have an eighth grader in Cape Elizabeth, their job is to go home, do something that's fun and relaxing, maybe get outside and do something, have a good evening, rest well, eat well and come in the next day and do the best that you can. So I will be sending something home in our progress reports about that. We'll also be putting it online for people. We're not trying to raise anxiety. We're just trying to inform people that these now have become another notch of importance and we just need everybody ready to do the best that they can. And I think that's it. And I was much shorter than Mr. Shedd. Thank you, Nancy. Any questions or comments for Nancy? Okay, Tom Panko. Good evening. I'll try to be like the closer that the Red Sox should have had last year and be brief. I uh, just want to let you know that we ended the 2003 calendar year struggling a little bit against germs and diseases at school, and our attendance rate, which is usually about 98 to 99 percent, dropped to the low 90s. Vacation breaks seem to have helped, and uh, we are enforcing hand washing as much as possible, but I don't need to remind you that this uh, cold weather and high winds uh, will be keeping us indoors, so we're hoping for the best with that. That is kind of the literal climate update from Pond Cove. We're also we're not on a trimester, we're on quarter system at, at Pond Cove, and we're fast approaching the halfway point, which means teaching teams are organizing their schedules to do the assessments that they've been working on for years. Um, we've developed some, we've improved them over the years, but as I'm sure, again, you're aware, um, No Child Left Behind learning results have added a new sense of urgency to our assessments. Uh, just to let you know, Sarah Simmons came by and actually organized our faculty meeting last week and did a great job bringing together the various threads of all the work we've been doing as a district and a school getting the assessments uh, system together. Um, it's no secret that schools never have enough time to do the work at hand, and this is certainly an extra burden. I think the secret, it's an open secret, is to use the time we have wisely. And Sarah has come up with a system that will allow people to use flex time or stipended time to get down to the real nitty gritty of getting what we're calling certified assessments. Um, on behalf of the staff, um, I can't say that this work is getting easier, but I think I can speak for everybody and say that we're beginning to understand it better and, and the end is in sight. So we should be able to get that done. In the meantime, we're still working on our building goals. Uh, one of our major goals this year was to investigate how we teach spelling and what the continuity is from K through four. 
So in our next late start day, again, another use of available time, we're going to revisit, see where we are with that, get a report from the teachers who are piloting the new materials with phonics and word study, and see how that all plays out with teaching writing in general. And that should be the bottom of the ninth, Marie. How did we do? Not yet. Not yet. Um, any questions or comments for Tom? For bean balls? Or? Thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay, thank You're you, welcome. Tom. Now we can move on to um, committee reports. Uh, Lane, the Finance Subcommittee. <clears throat> um, the Finance Committee met prior to this evening's meeting where we signed warrants and reviewed the appropriation reports again. Um, Pauline informed us of the 0405 state funding for a bus purchase and there was a discussion of a uh, proposed new rule from the Maine School Management Association regarding uh, rehired uh, retirees. Um, there was a short discussion on the 0203 annual financial report that we were given last, uh, um, last month. Um, and I just wanted to speak real quickly um, about the budget process and make a few additions to what Tom shared with you um, regarding the work to date. Um, I think that the, the public would appreciate hearing that um, the work started as early as November and December um, with our administrators. Um, and the school board had met um, in a workshop where we identified you know, our priorities and our goals. And as Tom had said, um, I was able to attend a lot of the district leadership teams um, and the school's uh, presentations um, on their in, uh, budgets this past week and a half and found it very enlightening and I appreciated their patience with my questions. Um, I'd also like to just touch base with the fact that we are starting to work very closely with the town council at this time. Um, back in December, uh, there was a, a very informal and preliminary discussion with um, the town manager, the finance uh, person from the town council and the chair, along with Marie, Tom, and myself, where we had discussions about um, topics in school and municipal uh, views on things. Um, we also met last week with the town council um, um, to share our budget schedules. Uh, we looked at our budget outlooks and our priorities. Because it was so preliminary, um, we really did discuss a lot of the fixed costs and some of our projected revenues and, of course, on our side, some of the projected shortfalls. But um, I think it does go a long way in setting the tone and making sure that as much information is out on the table for um, both the town council and the school board to understand. Um, last night, I know there was a public hearing um, or a public opportunity to speak to the town council regarding the outlook on the budget. Um, and we did have some community members who came to speak about their need for communication, which is something <coughs> that I know as a school board we've looked to identify to improve upon sharing as much information uh, with the community regarding our budget process. And then also um, there was um, a request to continue the work that um, our boards do and our um, councils do to pressure the state to look at the school funding. <coughs> Um, and so they heard that. Um, I just wanted to close and just say that um, on January 22nd, our town council is having a workshop and, and the public is invited um, where they'll be talking about further goal setting and some of setting of targets for both the municipal budget and the school budget. So um, we'll have s some more figures to deal with. And on Saturday, February 28th, which is a whole month away, the school board does have a Saturday workshop where we have had public participation and we um, get, get a chance to take a look uh, in depth at the budgets and um, are looking for input there. So I just wanted to close, you know, give you an update from the financial budget viewpoint as to where we are to date. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Um, the policy subcommittee, Anne. Our policy committee met yesterday and there were a number of different items that we discussed. Um, the first of which was a legal audit and review of the complete policy manual by our legal counsel. Um, Tom presented to us that we haven't had this kind of audit review done in the past seven or eight years 
and we felt that it was really time to you know have them take a look at the complete manual it's a fee of just four thousand dollars and it would be done by the end of march one of the things that they would do would be to put together a work plan that we could a prioritized work plan that we could follow for the next couple of years in terms of what policies we really need to be taking a look at and which ones need to be revised um, but specifically uh, what they would be offering to do is to conduct a legal review of all our policies, to analyze and edit policies for clarity and consistency with other policies, to note suggested areas for new policies, recommend policies that can be deleted, provide us with an affirmative action plan that meets current legal requirements. So in our committee, we gave Tom the go-ahead to um, engage Drummond Woodson to begin work on that. The second item on our agenda was to further discuss the conflict of interest and nepotism policy that we've presented to the board um, twice now for readings. And um, first, I would just like to say that, that the work that we're now doing in the policy committee, the policies that are being reviewed are, are ones that are f carried over really from a work plan that was developed by last year's committee. This is one of the policies that had been designated from last year as something that we needed to address. Um, it's a policy that takes a lot of consideration. It's certainly an important policy. And after a great deal of um, discussion at our committee meeting yesterday, we decided that we needed a lot more discussion. We wanted to go back and look at the original policy that we're following right now, um, take another look at some similar policies from other schools. And because of all that, we're really not ready to bring a revised policy before the board at this time. So, but in the next few meetings, we'll have one to present. Um, the next item was the co-curricular rules and regulations. That was another policy that was on last year's work plan. We felt that since the athletic policy had now been done, that was voted on last year, we needed to have a co-curricular policy that fell in line somewhat with the athletic one. Um, we decided that we would, again, look at some other policies from other schools and get input from the co-curricular advisors and some other people that would be most interested in what this policy had to say. When we gather all that information, we will be reviewing that policy at our next meeting. And then finally, we um, just outlined the, our work for the remainder of this year, the policies that we wanted to work on. Besides the, the two that I've just mentioned, conflict of interest and co-curricular, we hope to look at a diversity policy high school diplomacy requirements um, and main learning results, and textbook and curriculum adoption policy. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Anne. Um, and now to the building committee, Elaine. Um, yes, um, the school building committee um, met last week, but before I get into just a little overview as to what was accomplished there, I just wanted to share that um, our meeting minutes are being posted on the school website and so that they are available once approved by the school building committee to be read by the public. Um, I just wanted to share that I believe that I think it's in the minutes. I know it's in the minutes, but I don't know if I've shared with it, the public, but um, the building committee did go before the Bureau of General Services um, earlier in the month and we were approved for an application for alternative delivery. Uh, which means that we're able to use the construction management model um, to handle the high school renovation. Um, the other thing that's occurred is that we have assigned a subcommittee of the building committee, and then they will be taking a look at um, the possible construction managers that are interested in the position. We have run um, some ads in the newspapers. We sent out pre-qualification questionnaires to those that were interested and they are due back to the school department uh, by February 20th. The subcommittee will meet on February, uh, no, January, January 20th, and then the subcommittee will meet on January 27th um, and narrow those candidates down before they handle the interviews and then ultimately make a recommendation to the town council and the school board. Um, HKTA met last Friday with um, town staff and went over some of the uh, site plans for the high school um, exterior work. They um, showed them some of the um, 
parking lot plans for that involve the what they call the north parking lot or we refer to as the senior parking lot and then the parking lot down by the tennis court area and some field work um, we looked at some exterior plans um, of the entrance to the high school in addition to at the building meeting in addition to the um, some exterior views of the cafeteria expansion um, but apparently that um, meeting with the planning um, the town staff went well and they, he did get some questions and was able to get some feedback to them um, I think that um, that about covers it I know that it's regarding Pond Cove the um, the staff at HKTA has met with uh, a lot of the teachers and the administration at Pond Cove for some feedback on the layout of the addition at the wing. There has been some changes that I think that we all took a look at on the uh, plan in back in the finance committee room, but for the public uh, knowledge, there was some changes to the door egress at the end of the wing because of some drainage concerns. Uh, there was some shuffling of some of the classroom space so that we would have a larger OT room uh, to handle some of the equipment size that we had. And then there was also uh, the request that uh, there be individual bathrooms for the kindergarten rooms because of the needs of the kindergarten children so that rather than one large bathroom at the end of a hall, that's maybe poorly supervised that there'll now be individual bathrooms which seems to be the model that a lot of kindergarten spaces are, are looking at today um, but those were the major changes that are coming before that building committee on the pond cove okay thank you and back to Ann for the communications committee we did have our first committee meeting of this newly formed committee the communication committee in December and um, we decided that when we were setting our school board goals this fall, we wanted to set communication as a priority for this year. In light of the referendums and all the work that was happening around that, we wanted to ensure that communication stayed sort of out there as something that we were wanting to work on, not only when there was a pressing issue, but that it was something that we wanted to constantly be aware of, um, not just from the school board, but to the school board. So we did set the very simple goal of to facilitate and enhance communication flow to and from the school board. Um, Rich is on that committee with me. And we also asked the three administrators to um, find representatives who would serve on that. So we have um, a great committee, and we did come up with some ideas and suggestions for ways that we could you know, keep that communication flow going, not only within the schools, but to the greater community at large. We're also hoping to recruit a senior citizen who might be interested in working on this committee this, for the remainder of the year. Um, so within the next a couple of months, we hope to get some feedback on some of the ideas from other community folks that we came up with, and at a, a future meeting, we can present those and how we plan to enhance our communication. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, we have no unfinished business, um, and for new business, we have a recommendation to athletic fee positions. I do have one recommendation from uh, the middle school, and that is for the position of seventh grade girls basketball, and the candidate is uh, Steve Martin that is being recommended. Do we have a motion, Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for an athletic coaching position. Um, a second? Uh, Jennifer? Uh, any comments or questions? All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay. Um, then I think that ends the business portion of, of our meeting tonight. And I'll just review the dates for uh, future meetings. This Friday, um, January 16th, from 8 to 10, the uh, school board has what we're calling a school board retreat um, to discuss school board roles and responsibilities. Um, our next school board workshop, which will um, uh, be on the budget, will be Tuesday, January 27th at 7 o'clock in the high school library. 
Um, we also, the second part of the school board retreat, retreat will be on January 30th. 30th, right? Not the 23rd. 30th? I don't know. The I, it, it is the 30th. It says the 23rd. It's the 30th. Okay. Um, in the Jordan Conference Room, uh, which we will be discussing school law. The policy, the next policy subcommittee meeting will be February 3rd at noon here in the Jordan Conference Room. The next building committee meeting will be February 4th in the Jordan Conference Room at 7 p.m. Um, the next finance subcommittee and school board meeting will be February 10th. Um, and that's it for future meetings. Um, can we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, I move that we adjourn at 8.25. Congratulations. Okay, that's still good, right? Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, a second? Uh, Elaine. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you.